Yesterday, when we revisited the bike problem, we discovered that the area under the curve or between the curve and the x-axis was equivalent to the definite integral. Okay, so the definite integral over a period of time gives us the area under the curve for a function. So, AP exam loves questions like this. You know they love table problems already, but they love to do problems with tables like this as well. So, we are going to try and approximate a left-hand Riemann sum. Now, I haven't used that term yet, but it, it has the word sum in it. You should think you're, you're adding up the areas. Uh, it's named after a mathematician. I can't remember his first name, but his last name was Riemann. Um, and... So anyways, left hand, sum, those would be the keywords that we're just adding up a bunch of rectangles, okay? So for the first example, I'm going to illustrate this so that you can start to picture it, but really you should get to the point where you don't need to draw these. Um, you can just use the information off the table to figure them out. Now, the difference between these and the rectangles that we've been doing before is that for these, uh, your intervals are not always equal. Okay, so um, at zero, the y value is three. At two, the y value is five. Yeah, and I don't have a very accurate picture here. At three, it is seven. At four, it goes back down to five. And at nine, it goes back to three. So we have a big jump. So to do the Riemann sum here, our first interval is from zero to two, and once a left-handed. So there's our first rectangle. It has a width of two and a height of three. So it has an area of six. Our next one goes from 2 to 3, but left-handed, we use the y value of 2. So this one has a width of 1 and a height of 5, so it has an area of 5. The next one, we go from 3 to 4. We go to the y value of 3 over to 4, so another width of 1, but this one has a height of 7, so its area is 7. And then the final one, we go from 4 all the way to 9, so we have a width of 5 and a height of 5. So to get the sum, we just add all those together. We've got 11 plus 32, so what, 43? Now, if we had done a right-handed sum, we would have gotten something different because we would have started on this end, so our first height would have been 3, um, and then we wouldn't have used the last height. So um, that would have given us something slightly different if we'd started on the right side. So notice that the left hand sum, just like with the ones we were doing before, when you do the left handed sum, you don't use the y value of the end of your interval. When you do a right handed sum, you won't use the y value of the far left side of your interval. You use all the other y values in between, but just not the ends. Now what sets these apart is they're not all equal intervals. So you've got to pay attention to the width of your interval. Okay. Uh, let's do another one. This one goes from 0 to 13. Okay, and I'm not going to draw this one out. I'm just going to show you how I always do these. Uh, without drawing out a picture of the graph just by going off the table. Still doing the left-handed sum. So my first interval has a width of 1 and a height of 15. So we've got 15 plus my next interval has a width of 1 and a height of 11. My next interval, another width of 1, a height of 8. Now I got a width of 3 and a height of 11. Width of 2, height of 10, width of 5, height of 14. 
Now these are some bigger numbers, so I'm going to cheat and use my calculator. Uh, they will not ask you to add up an incredibly large amount of numbers. Okay? They will typically be pretty reasonable if they put it on the calculator inactive section. Okay? But 157, I mean, technically you could compute that pretty quickly without your calculator as well. I'm just being a little witsy here at the end of the day. And be completely honest. Okay, so you can draw it out. If you need to see the, the physical representation of it, you're more than welcome to draw it out. But really, it's, it's wasting a lot of time that you don't have. Uh, these questions really should go very quickly for you on the AP exam. Um, they should not, uh, these should be questions where you don't spend the three minutes. You should spend maybe 30 seconds working these out because once you see it, you know exactly what it is. All you have to do is plug and chug the numbers. And then you can use that two and a half minutes somewhere else on a problem that takes time. Okay, uh, let's look at the right-handed really quick. Okay, same kind of situation. Um, but we're going to do the right-handed, so we start on the right side, with the one height of two. Width of one, height of three. You're always using the number on the right. Width of two, height of five. And I don't know that I've ever written this backwards before, but I just thought it was a good idea today. Uh, with the four, height of six. And then the last one has a width of 1 and a height of 5. Okay. So technically, if you really despise working from right to left, you can go from left to right. You just have to remember you're using the y value of the point on the right for each interval instead of the y value of the point on the left. You just have to be careful with that. Okay. So we've got 5 plus 24 plus 10 plus 5, so 2 that's 10, that's 20, 44. Okay. And one more just for kicks. A little bit longer of an interval. Right handed, 5 and 12, 1 and 9. 7 and 7, 3 and 8, and I'm doing these pretty quickly, but, and, and I am encouraging you to take these quickly so that you can use the time on another problem, but y'all know that they're very good at putting answer choices on there that you would get if you just made a small error. So please be careful if this is on the calculator, or even if it's calculator active, make sure that you're very careful uh, with your numbers. Let's see here. There's 80 and 100 plus 73. Yeah, 173. Okay, nothing like some mental math in the Friday, right?